The science of artificial intelligence has made great strides in recent years. And one of the areas where we've particularly seen development is in generating images. AI art generators are widely available now so that anyone can create a work of art with just a simple prompt of a few words. Floral coyote magician. It's opened up a whole bunch of legal and ethical questions, and it's added some new confusion to a debate that's been going on since the Greeks. What is art? Who can we call an artist? Is art that's created by artificial intelligence even art? And if so, who's the artist? Or is there one at all? Hi, I'm Dan and this is Puzzle File. Today I'm taking on the topic of AI art in jigsaw puzzles. It's a huge topic, so I'm just gonna barely be able to scratch the surface here. But I'll be sharing some of the questions that I've got rattling around in my mind. And we're gonna take a look at a couple puzzle brands that are already using AI to create puzzle art. Because of social media, I think that we're even more aware these days of who's creating the art for our puzzles. Social media platforms give us the opportunity to actually reach out and interact with these artists. And so I think as a community, we're more aware than ever that puzzles don't just happen. Somebody has to sit down and create that image that you're puzzling. And we love seeing an artist profile on the puzzle box. It really gives you a sense of the story behind the puzzle, how it was made, why it was made, how it fits into the larger body of work for this artist. But then at the same time, here's this new technological development that seems like it could be threatening to remove artists from the equation altogether. In the world of jigsaw puzzles, could all of those artists that we love be replaced by bots? And how likely is that to happen? Is that the future of jigsaw puzzles? That's a very real concern for a lot of people. But to start to wrap our heads around it, I think we do need to get some clarity about what we mean when we're talking about art. Because there's all these different ideas bottled up in that word art, and it's definitely more than we can unpack here today. But when we praise someone's artistry, we might be talking about their craft, their technical skill with their medium, or we might be referring to their creativity, their inventiveness. We might just mean that we appreciate their aesthetic taste, their talents for design and composition, for making something that's beautiful. Or we could be talking about their ability to capture an idea or a feeling and express it through their medium in a way that we can connect to, that makes us feel something. And so there's all these different ways to think about artistic skill. Craft, design, creativity, expression. I'm sure you could come up with others. And so one question that we can ask is, which of these aspects of art making is AI good at? Unreal Puzzles is a new company they started just in the last year. And I find them interesting because they've built their whole brand around artificial intelligence. All of their puzzle images are created using AI. And they seem to be really excited about using this new technology as a tool for creativity. From their website, our craft is the art of conversation a dance of words that inspires the AI to generate stunning imaginative images and stories that transport you to other worlds. The art of conversation is the key to unlocking creativity. We ask the AI questions, we interpret its responses, and we use our own creative touch to turn those responses into stunning puzzle images. This process is a dance of words. We don't just rely on technology to generate puzzles for us. We use it as a tool to enhance our own creativity. We believe that the best puzzles come from a collaboration between man and machine. So when I was planning this video, I reached out to Unreal Puzzles and Arthur, the owner of the company, very generously sent me this 500 piece puzzle. This is called When Colors and Happiness Collide, number one. It's the first in a series of puzzles on this colors and happiness theme. But Arthur was also very generous with his time and he had a lot to say about AI art. His condition for sending me the puzzle 
was that he really wanted to be a part of the conversation. So I have a general statement from Arthur about his thoughts on AI that I'm gonna read to you in full in just a moment. And he also had some really interesting answers to my questions. So we're gonna be hearing from Arthur a lot during this video. But first, let's take a look at this puzzle. Okay, this image is just so joyful. I love looking at it. Again, the title is When Colors and Happiness Collide. This is the first in that series. It's 500 pieces. The box is on the smaller side, nice and compact. Let's take a look at the pieces. So it comes with just a, a little mini poster. Okay, I like these. They've got a nice thickness. They're a nice big size that I like. Uh, they're maybe a little glossy. It doesn't look too bad though. And the colors are nice and bright. It looks like the print quality is clear. Yeah, these look great. Okay, so my plan for this, I think I am gonna start with the edge pieces and then I'm just gonna start from scarcity. So we'll do the, the greens first and then the blue section and then the yellow and then the pink because there's the most of that. I don't think she looks too, too hard. The pink might get a little tricky. Let's find out. The frame came together really quickly. Over here are all the yellow and pink pieces. I'll have to sort through those later. And these piles are anything with blue and green on it. This is why it's good to have a little plan of how you're gonna do the puzzle before you start sorting. Because if I had just dived into sorting by color, not knowing what order I was gonna solve this in, then some of these pieces probably would have been sorted into pink rather than blue. But because I knew blue was coming up first, I sorted anything that had any little bit of blue into the blue pile. And that way I know I'll be able to totally finish all the blue stuff before I move on to the other colors. My least favorite pieces in this puzzle, and probably any puzzle I've done recently, are these pieces with teeth. Ooh. Okay, here's some of what Arthur at Unreal Puzzles had to say. He says, Unreal Puzzles came to life when our youngest daughter turned two. It was August 2022 and AI image generators were just starting to make waves online. To celebrate her birthday, I generated an image that was so cute and related to her, a young girl in a magical universe under a rainbow in a blue princess dress, just like the one she loved. We didn't want to just frame the picture, we wanted to make it something she could interact with. Turning it into a jigsaw puzzle seemed like the perfect solution, and from there, everything fell into place. That's the foundation of Unreal Puzzles, using AI as a tool to bring our creativity to life in the form of entertaining and brain-stimulating jigsaw puzzles. We're excited about the accessibility and affordability of AI. It's available to pretty much anyone with internet access. Ideas that once remained in your head due to a lack of technical skills can now come to life through a creative partnership with AI. While it's true that AI could create things for you, we prefer to create with it. We see it as a dynamic conversation, evolving and adapting to reach a result that might not be the initial vision, but perfectly encapsulates the core idea in a unique way. We don't perceive AI as a threat to traditional art. Instead, it's a tool that raises the bar. For traditional and established artists, AI opens new horizons for creating previously unimaginable works. 
On the other hand, more formulaic art forms may see a more significant shift as AI introduces efficiency and innovation. Why do we put AI in the spotlight at Unreal Puzzles? We want to share the thrill of discovery and the joy of the unexpected with our customers. We aim to include them in the magic and fun. It just makes sense. This came together really quickly. It was a lot of fun and a really uplifting image to work on with these bright colors and her big smile. The pieces feel really good. I will say the fit is very crumbly. If I try to pick this up, you'll see it just comes right apart. So I wasn't able to easily pick up sections and move them around, but to me, that's not the worst crime. I was talking before about how I enjoy knowing that there's a story behind the puzzle. It can make the experience more rewarding if I feel like I'm connected to a person on the other end. And so I think it's really smart that Unreal Puzzles has a lot of information on their website and on the side of the box about their process, about their feelings about art, and about how they're using artificial intelligence as a tool for creativity. Because although I don't have a story in my head of an artist who sat down at a drafting table and sketched this out and what they were feeling and what personal experiences might have inspired this image. Instead, I do have a different kind of story where I can picture Arthur engaging in that conversation with the AI, working through different versions of it, trying to hone in on something that is personal for him and that he wants to put out there and share with the world. One thing that Arthur mentioned was being excited about the accessibility of AI art. That if you have ideas and creativity that you want to express, but you don't have the technical skills, you can still create something beautiful. So you can sort of outsource the technical skill part of it to the artificial intelligence. On the other hand, won't that tend to devalue those technical skills that people have worked for years and years to develop? And in the future, won't that kind of demotivate people to try to learn those skills at all? In the age of digital photography, fewer and fewer people are learning how to develop photos by hand. If I told you that I develop photos by hand, you might think, oh, that's an interesting little old timey hobby. But you know you don't have to do all that work. You can just snap a picture with your phone. Is that what drawing is going to be like in the future? If you want to learn to create beautiful and interesting images in any medium, part of that process is going to be to look at lots and lots of examples. You're going to spend years studying the great artists, looking at great works of art, looking at different artistic styles, and begin to develop your own way of working and your own style. And it turns out this is exactly how an AI program learns to make art as well. But AI can do it a lot faster and better than you. The machine learning process involves looking at many, 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 many images very fast, and the AI has perfect memory for them. So when I ask an AI program to give me a picture of a variety of succulents, the program has seen thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of pictures of succulents. So not only is it able to create pictures that feature succulents, like I asked for, except for this one weird picture, not sure what happened there, but it also knows how pictures of succulents are typically composed. This is one of the biggest areas of controversy and debate around these programs, because AI has to learn by looking at existing examples. So the artists who created those examples haven't been compensated for that use of their work. In some ways, that's the same as if I spend years in art school studying the work of other artists and synthesize all of that into my own work and style. But in some ways, it also feels different, and I can't quite articulate why. I asked Arthur at Unreal Puzzles about this question, and here's how he responded. He said, it's crucial to understand that AI is not replicating these works, but is learning styles, forms, and structures and using these insights to generate original creations. It's akin to an artist who learns from the masters, but goes on to produce unique art. That said, the difficult question of how to compensate artists whose work forms part of the AI's training data is complex. 
Current copyright laws protect specific works of art, but do not extend to an artist's style or technique. Therefore, while the AI might learn from an artist's style, it doesn't reproduce specific artworks, placing its creations in a gray area from a legal perspective. Arthur went on to say that we need updates to our laws and regulations that address these questions, but he finished by saying, and we need to evolve in how we deal with these new technologies personally. The same fundamental update needed on legal frameworks is needed on our mindset. So when I ask AI to generate a picture of a variety of succulents, I totally agree that there are countless images out there exactly like this, Nobody owns this idea of a picture of a variety of succulents. In the same way that it obviously wouldn't be a problem if you looked at a book of pictures of succulents and then you went and drew your own picture of succulents. Where it gets a lot trickier though for me is that you can ask AI to imitate the style of an actual artist. So by giving an AI program the very simple prompt, Thomas Kincaid Cottage Bridge, I immediately have nine images that basically look like Thomas Kincaid paintings. And there's nothing that says I can't slap those nine images on jigsaw puzzles and sell them for a profit. But that was also true before AI. If I had enough skill to paint those nine images that are clearly designed to look exactly like Thomas Kincaid paintings, legally there's nothing that says I can't do that and sell my own line of hazy, glowy, kincaid -y puzzles. Crea Minds Labs is a company that sells their products through Etsy. They sell a lot of different products, including jigsaw puzzles. But a really interesting thing that they do is you can come to them with your own ideas that they'll turn into a design for a phone case, for stickers, or for a jigsaw puzzle. I asked Crea Minds Labs about how their process works, and he told me, we combine generative AI with refinement using Photoshop, Pixomatic, and Procreate. AI certainly gets us most of the way, but there's almost always adjustments to be made the old fashioned way. So this is a really interesting use of the technology where the concept for the artwork comes from you, the consumer. It's generated by the AI program and then refined by the people at Crea Minds Labs. What they need from you to get started is you choose a size of your puzzle. It's gonna be either 252 pieces or 520 pieces. Then give them a detailed description of whatever your concept is for the puzzle. You can be as specific or as broad as you want. If you have just sort of a general idea, they're gonna to work to flesh it out for you. Or if you have a lot of specifics, you know exactly what you want, they can work with that too. You're gonna to tell them if you want it to be portrait or landscape. Tell them if you want any text on it. And you can even send them reference images for inspiration. So we've seen there's lots of places that you can take a picture and have it turned into a puzzle. But Crea Minds Labs is taking that concept even a step further and saying, just give us the idea, we'll make the picture and make it into a puzzle. And I got to try it out. All right, so Crea Minds Labs did send me this puzzle for free, which I appreciate very much, thank you. It was created from a prompt that I gave them. I told them that I wanted synchronized swimmers diving into a murky swamp with alligators and an old man playing a banjo. It's funny because I, I didn't have a specific idea in mind of what I wanted the final product to look like, but I know that I wasn't picturing this. And yet I love it. It delivered everything I wanted out of it. And in a way that's surprising. This is not the old man I pictured. This is not the swamp I pictured and it's gorgeous. I'll say it's not the nicest box design. The box itself feels really good, but then it just has the puzzle image glued on there. So it's not the most attractive box. Now I did already open this to look at the pieces. So they originally were in a plastic bag that I've removed already. Nothing else comes in the box, just the pieces. There's no poster or anything. And the pieces are decent. They've got a white paper backing, which I'm usually not a big fan of, but we'll see how I feel about these. The quality of the printing looks really good. It definitely looks better than the quality of the printing of the image on the box. And something I can already see is that we've got a lot of pieces that didn't separate. A lot of pairs still stuck together, but it looks like they just need to be snapped apart. 
so that's no big deal. Okay, this puzzle has 520 pieces. Right away, I think you can see we've got some tricky spots here. Obviously, this solid blue sky is going to be a pain. And then all this darkness down here might give us some trouble, too. Although there is some texture in there that'll help. So I think I'm going to start with the frame, uh, work on some of the more brightly colored stuff, the trees, the swimmers, and the banjo player. And probably I'll be saving the sky for last. Let's go. ended up doing a lot more sorting than I expected. Here I sorted out all of these solid blue pieces. There's kind of a lot of those. This is any other pieces with sky on it. These are all the edge pieces divided by sky and swamp. These over here collectively are sort of the slush pile, but I did start sorting out pieces that I think are part of the banjo player. These are kind of tree pieces, the dark swamp, and lighter swamp pieces. But there was a lot of guesswork in this, so I think a lot of this is missorted. Before printing your puzzle, Creaminds Labs does give you the opportunity to see the image and approve it. And when I saw how much sky there was, I thought about asking them to add sort of a texture to the sky for me. And then I thought, no, I'll leave it in there as kind of a challenge. But now that I'm looking at these blue pieces, I, I'm wondering if I regret that decision. Well, let's see how it goes. Okay, I got all the easier stuff done and it came together pretty quickly. The pieces have really unique shapes, so that's gonna help me out a lot on these harder sections, the dark water and the blue sky. The swamp has a lot of grass and reeds going through it, which is gonna help out a lot, but I actually am feeling ready to take on that solid blue sky. So I'm gonna start working on that now. This was really nice. There's a thing that our brains do when we have a hand in creating something that it makes that thing feel a little extra special to us. We all tend to overestimate the quality of our own little projects. And so I have a feeling that part of what I love so much about this puzzle is that it came from my concept. But you tell me, what do you think of this image? A couple things to note about the quality. Again, this one has a very crumbly fit, but otherwise the pieces are nice. I love the unique piece shapes. And really the solid blue section, although it was slower than the rest of the puzzle, it wasn't that bad because there were nice unique piece shapes. It's not a random cut, it is all the standard puzzle piece shapes, but they're just cut in kind of funky ways. So I think I actually am glad that I didn't have him change the solid blue because it gave a kind of challenging section to this puzzle. This puzzle is now available on their Etsy store.
Or if you want to try creating a puzzle from your own concept, Crea Minds Labs has created a promo code for 15% off now through October 1st on any puzzle they sell. The code is PuzzleFile, so check them out. So it seems like with the way that AI works right now, the creative force is coming from the human half of the equation. AI will follow your instructions and deliver something based on pre-existing examples. So although the AI program can create an image that's never been seen before, it doesn't seem like the AI can truly innovate. I'm thinking about some recent examples of really creative, innovative puzzles. Some of the ones that are popping into my head are the Thousand Changing Colors puzzle from the Playgroup. I did a video about that one recently. Or Simone Yetch's white puzzle with one piece missing. Or this one that's been on my wish list for a while, the Clearly Impossible Puzzle Broken Glass Edition. So these people really came up with ways to do something new and fresh with jigsaw puzzles. And that's something that you can't ask an AI program to do. You can't prompt for that. If you ask it for an innovative jigsaw puzzle design, all it's gonna be able to do is pull from the examples that it's seen that matches those keywords, which is obviously the opposite of innovation. Even with this puzzle, the AI program was clearly familiar with banjos and swamps and synchronized swimmers. But unless you had fed the AI program a bunch of images like this, the AI program on its own wouldn't have put all those elements together. To some people, expression is the defining feature of art. It's what separates art from craft. In this view of art, a quilt, no matter how skillfully done and how intricate the details, would not qualify as art unless it was created to express an idea or a feeling for other people to connect to. This is the aspect of art that our current AI cannot hope to touch. In this puzzle, when colors and happiness collide, the most interesting detail to me is this streak of color that's running down her cheek. If I was viewing this piece of art in a museum, I'd be standing in front of it looking at that streak of color and wondering how that choice was made by the artist. Was it an aesthetic choice? Just a way to tie the rainbow colored hair into the woman's face? Or was it an expressive choice? Perhaps it was meant to be reminiscent of a tear running down her face. But this work was created by AI. AI doesn't do self-expression. You can't ask AI to express itself. AI has no self to express. So the rainbow tear streak is meaningless. Just a completely random blip from a computer program. I'm assuming here that that design feature was not specifically prompted for by Unreal Puzzles. It might have been though, and if so, my point still stands. If that rainbow streak means anything, that meaning came from human beings, not from the AI. When AI can do that, when AI can make a choice to put a rainbow tear streak on a woman's face, as an expression of something that it is feeling and trying to communicate to others, then we will have truly created artificial intelligence. That kind of artificial intelligence is a long way off, if it's even possible. I still have a lot of questions and a lot of mixed feelings about it. I do believe that AI art will hurt artists financially. Jobs for artists that are based around creativity and expression probably won't be affected, at least for now. Whereas with jobs that are more based around elements of design and technical skill, we probably will start to see AI taking on an increasing role in those areas. But it won't kill art. Remember, photography didn't kill art. For hundreds of years, people had been developing the skill of capturing what you saw in a realistic way in your artwork. And suddenly, with the invention of photography, here's this quick and easy way to capture what you're looking at far more realistically than you'd be able to do with your hands. But it didn't kill art. Instead, art leaned into what it could do that photography couldn't. And in the 20th century, we see this sudden development of all these different genres of art and modes of expression. And so I think moving into the future, we're going to see some amazing results from the pressure that AI is putting on artists right now. 
artists will again have to lean into the things that humans can do better than technology. I think this is tricky when we're talking about jigsaw puzzles because in jigsaw puzzles, we're not necessarily looking for thought-provoking, innovative, expressive works that you would hang in a museum. We're often okay with something that's well-designed and shows some amount of technical skill, the things that AI is good at. I've heard a lot of puzzlers say that they refuse to buy any puzzles that they know were created with AI. And I don't blame them for feeling that way. Companies will continue to give us what we spend money on. For me, I'm not making a hard and fast rule for myself, but I go back to my earlier point that I'm interested in puzzles that have a story behind them. So just like I'm not interested in a company that is lazily spewing out hundreds of different nearly identical landscape puzzles, slapped together by some graphic design intern. I will continue to not be interested in that when they're being slapped together by a computer program. But in a situation where someone is using AI to create something that they want to show you, that expresses something, that they're hoping you'll connect with, well, that's something different. There is a story there. Thank you for sticking with me to the end of this long video. Again, these are just the questions that are in my head. This is the beginning of my thoughts. I'm trying to keep my mind wide open, so let me know what you resonated with. Let me know what you disagreed with. I'd love to hear some different opinions on these things. For a different look at this subject by another puzzler, I'm gonna link a video below from Donna Louise at For the Love of Puzzles. Thanks again to Unreal Puzzles and Korea Minds Labs. Please consider hitting the subscribe button before you go. I'm gonna get back to puzzling and I'll catch you all next time.